All right. We should be ready to go. So, good morning to everybody. It is a pleasure uh, this morning to have uh, Alexander Bondarenko from uh, Martin Luther University in uh, Germany. He is one of the organizers of the Touche Lab at uh, Claire. As uh, you all know, uh, you have, as part of your group project, as part of your homeworks, to uh, participate in, uh, in one of the tasks of uh, Touche. And uh, basically, Alexander is here to explain mm -hmm. us uh, what Touche is, uh, what are uh, uh, how the different tasks uh, work uh, and uh, what are good approaches uh, for uh, argument uh, retrieval, starting from baselines, IR systems, uh, as the ones uh, we are uh, studying uh, in these days. Uh, Alexander is a uh, final year at PhD the student and uh, a research assistant at uh, Martin Luther University of Hall Wittenberg in Germany, excuse me for the pronunciation, Alexander, and uh, he, he works on a language, uh, natural language understanding, uh, question answering systems, uh, axiomatic thinking, and uh, argumentation in uh, information uh, retrieval. So, uh, Alexander, uh, thank you very much for uh, coming here and uh, uh, explain us uh, what Touche is and what we can, uh, we can do. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Yeah, and thank you very much for inviting and having me uh, and giving the opportunity to talk about the shared tasks on argument retrieval uh, to share that we organized at CLEAR this year for the, for the third time. And on the first slide, there is a list of my colleagues, uh, co-organizers, researchers from different universities in Germany, a university in Halle, Leipzig, Weimar, Paderborn, and university in Hamburg. So today, uh, today in my presentation, I'm gonna introduce the shared tasks um, uh, for, for argument retrieval to share. I, since we deal with argu uh, argumentation and argument retrieval, I am also going to talk a little bit about how um, arguments and argumentation in general can be defined and what are important features of arguments uh, that we need to take in, into account when we build argument retrieval system and uh, important features our argument quality and argument st stance. I will also give um, um, a description of the corpora that is used in the shared tasks. And also we'll overview the submitted approaches that we received in previous two years. And we'll discuss what approaches work best. And finally, I will conclude with the overview of different uh, information retrieval software toolkits that hopefully will allow you to uh, quickly start in building your own argument retrieval or retrieval uh, systems. So let me first start with the first task of Touche. And the first task is argument retrieval for controversial questions. An example of such questions could be, should hate speech be banned? Uh, we described a general search scenario as follows that users search for an argument gist on some controversial topics like banning hate speech. And the task would be to retrieve and rank sentences, which are uh, main claims and premises. I will gonna, I, I'm going to talk a little bit more about what are claims and premises in terms of argumentation a little bit later. And... Uh, the main point that these sentences should convey a key points to this controversial topic. So basically be relevant and um, can potentially answer 
the question, should hate speech be banned? Uh, the data behind, the basis data behind our, uh, for, for this shared task is a collection of text passages, 400,000 arguments that were sampled from different online debates and online uh, debating portals that we also split into these sentences to create the final corpus. Uh, the second task uh, is about argument retrieval for comparative questions. And here is an example of such, of such a questions, like should I major in philosophy or psychology? And the search scenario, generic search scenario is that users have some choice problem and they need to make an informed decision. And then the task would be given almost 1 million text passages that were extracted from web documents, retrieve and rank relevant passages. Ideally, they should be argumentative. That would be relevant to answer a comparative question, for example, comparing two majors in philosophy and psychology. Uh, since we, uh, since our task about argument retrieval is also important to better understand what is argumentation. There are different, uh, th there are many different definitions of argumentation, and one of the, uh, one of the most well known uh, was formulated by Walton, who uh, and colleagues who said that an argument should contain two main parts. One is a claim or conclusion. This is something what I think, my opinion on, on the controversial matter. But this is not enough. This opinion should be supported by premises, which reasons that explain why uh, some proposition should hold. And another important feature of any argument that it should convince can be a stance in form of a pro or con. And in the middle of this line, here is an example. For example, my opinion, I say, argumentation will be a key element of conversational agents. And then I support, I give a pro uh, reasons for that, like superficial, because superficial conversation is not enough and because users want to know the why to make informed decision. And then argumentation would be a process of combining these arguments uh, with the goal to persuade some, someone about this opinion or to come an agree, uh, to an agreement. Uh, argumentation plays also an important role in decision-making. When we have a choice between several options, then we want to review several pro and con arguments towards this option. And uh, in the end, to form uh, some opinion on the matter. So, for the tasks, we created uh, 50 search topics. And here is an example of a search topic for the first task. It consists of three parts. The first is the title. For example, should hate speech be penalized more? And this title then can be used as a query to retrieve a relevant, for the first task, relevant sentences. And then the second part is a description, which gives more details on the particular search scenario. Description can also be used for a retrieval. For example, uh, you can extract some synonyms uh, and then extend your initial query for uh, to find more relevant um, documents. Like for example, penalized can be extended or substituted by uh, uh, synonyms that can be found in descriptions like punish or inhibit. And then the narrative will be used at the end by our human assessors who will then judge the retrieved documents as being relevant or not relevant. Uh, so a little bit more details on the first task. 
So we, in our first task, we want to support users who search for arguments that can be used then in conversation and debates. And the basis, we have 400,000 uh, argumentative passages, and then we split them into sentences, premises and conclusion. So all in all, the corpus contains about more, more than 6 million such sentences. Then we formulate the task. We provide the search topics, 50 search topics. Then from a collection of the sentences, a pair of sentences should be retrieved, uh, which represent an argument gist. Uh, we will evaluate the results based on topical relevance of these sentences to search uh, to search topics and also to argument quality. And for example, as an argument quality that a sentence pair should form a coherent text. So for example, no contradiction between the sentences. And of course, uh, each sentence must ideally be the most representative uh, of a particular argument. Okay, as the example for the second topic, we also formulated 50 comparative search topics with the title, description, and narrative. But additionally, we also, um, we also uh, specified the compared objects that can be uh, found in uh, comparative questions, like in this case is majoring in philosophy and so psychology. And this is important because I will talk I will talk also about this because as, as an additional task, we will ask to, uh, to retrieve text passages and to identify the stance towards the comparison objects. But these comparative objects can also be used in the retrieval systems. And we saw already in previous years, in previous submissions that actually trying to count the number of occurrence, occurrences in the document, uh, occurrences of these compar comparison objects can uh, help uh, a retrieval system to find relevant documents. So in our second task, we want to support users that face some choice problem from everyday life. And the basis, uh, uh, of the uh, of of the retrieval corpus is a collection of web documents clue clue web 12 so we split some of these documents uh, into paragraphs and created a corpus of more than 800,000 uh, uh, passages Okay, and then the, uh, the task is to index the, this corpus and given a search topic, retrieve relevant and also argumentative passage that would compare the, object that, uh, the objects, comparison objects that are specified in, uh, in a search topic. We will also evaluate the results based on a general topical relevance of the retrieve passages, and we'll look into so-called rhetorical quality of argumentation in these passages. And rhetorical quality can be specified as uh, that, uh, that the text in a passage is easy to read, easy to follow, a proper language is used, and also a clear structure is present. And as additional task, it's not an obligatory, but we would be happy if you also uh, could build a classifier that would identify the stance of the retrieved text passages with, re with respect to compared objects. So as for the evaluation, we talked already that for both tasks, we will be judging basically two main dimensions. The first is the topical relevance. And we will be using three relevance, <laughs> relevance judgments. Given a document, 
uh, or text passage, we will judge whether it's relevant, not relevant, or highly relevant to a, to a given search topic. And here is an example of a comparative question with a better pet, a cat or a dog. Then if a text passage compares and talks ex exactly about cats and dogs being pets, so, okay, this is relevant because it provides us with all information that we need. Um, but if this text passage would talk only about cats or only about dogs, then it would be relevant and not highly relevant because there's still uh, some information is missing. Um, and something else, if a text passage does, doesn't talk about either object or it can contain some advertisement and um, doesn't provide us with a useful information that we are looking for, uh, this text passage would be uh, labeled uh, as not relevant. So, and here is here are a couple. Uh, here are two examples of argument quality. Uh, we will again label argument quality of extracted um, passages uh, with three labels: high quality, an average argument quality, and uh, low quality. Or if uh, if a text passage doesn't contain argumentation at all, it will also receive a zero score. So high argument quality, as we already shortly discussed, uh, constitute a prob use a usage of proper language. It has a good structure, good logic, good grammar, and easy to follow when people read them. If there is only one of these aspects present, but other aspects are violated, like for example, um, language is good, proper language is used, but logic is broken or it's hard to follow uh, what is meant, then, um, then most likely um, a document uh, will get an argument quality as average. And using bad language in text, if it's hard to read or follow many grammar issues, or if it's not an argument, this text passage, this document will receive a zero score as an argument quality. So, and finally, uh, for the stance classification, here is an example, like for example, uh, for the first task, we will have a question, is climate change real? And here is an example of, the, of an argument which talks pro claim that climate change in, in real is because the increase in global temperature and the shri shrinking of the Arctic ice. That's why my conclusion is that climate change is real. It will be a little bit different for the second task. Uh, for example, we again have a question that compares a cat versus dog. Then uh, this, this, the short sentence that cats can be quite affectionate and attentive and thus are good friends should be the stance of this sentence should be classified as supporting or pro object one, pro cat. In the second stance, sentence cats are less faithful than dogs. These should be a con argument for cat, but it will be a pro argument for dog. So for the second task, we will have overall four labels, stance labels, pro object one, pro object two, neutral stance. Neutral stance mean, means that some text passage talks, for example, about cats are good and dogs are good and they're both equally good. Or it can, neutral stance can also mean that cats are bad and dogs are bad and they are equally bad. And the first label will be no stance. So for example, there is no argumentation, no stance, no opinion. It's just some, a number of facts uh, collected. So why do so? Why do retrieval? Why do argument retrieval? Why do... Uh, uh, stance classification or argument quality. Here is an example of a use case. 
just imagine you're building a search engine that should um, should be able to uh, to retrieve relevant information on different controversial to topics like is climate change in, in, uh, is real. And here is an example of the ArcSme search engine. So uh, below, uh, below the image, there is a link. Uh, this is a clickable link. Uh, if you click on it, you would go to this ArcSme search engine and uh, can play with it and type different questions. And ideally, uh, this search engine would find relevant, relevant documents on a particular uh, controversial topic like climate change, it will, and will sort them uh, into the pro arguments and con arguments and put it into the different side. Um, it would also generate a snippet and will provide the link to the document by clicking on the link, you then can go to, to this specific document that ArxMe thinks is relevant uh, to this question. So another example of, uh, of such um, argument search engine is argument text. And here I type who, who is a better pet, a cat and a dog. And this search engine again found relevant documents, extracted some snippets and also sorted them into the pro and con side and allows users also to explore and to read documents and to collect argumentation that would support one or another object. And finally, uh, uh, hopefully help to, uh, to come to, your, to an informed decision. So as next, I would give a brief overview of the approaches that we already collected so far in our previous Touche to, to editions. So each year we uh, create a baseline approach and then we compare uh, the submitted approaches by our participants with the baseline. So by experimenting with different baseline approaches, like really basic ones. So we also saw that, for example, language modeling, like Dirichlet smooth language model is <clears throat> performs, and especially for task one, performs better than BM25, uh, such, one, such, such, such that um, when you start building your, um, uh, your retrieval approaches, sure you can start with basic TFIDF based models like BM25, but we already saw that our statistical language models often perform better, not always, but often. And what we also already saw is that analyzing and argument quality while retrieving arguments and trying to incorporate these signals in the, when you're created, creating the final ranking results is also important for argument retrieval. So, here I'm showing some results from, from last year submitted to task one. And uh, since we evaluated the topical relevance of the retrieve arguments and argument quality, that's why each table uh, contains uh, two values of NDCG at five for relevance and for the quality. And in the gray, uh, you see the result. So the most effective approach from uh, 2020 and in black, you see the most effective approaches from last year, from 2021. So what we saw last year compared to the first year of Touche is that overall and even the baseline system so, uh, sortsman, which was a Dirichlet language model, it performs, uh, performed a little bit worse last in the uh, first year. The reason for that is that we used a different set of search topics. So we have 50 topics in first year and then um, 
uh, we created uh, 50 new topics in the second year, and they were overall more difficult for the system. Um, however, um, in the first year, we saw that only one participant could actually propose uh, an approach that was more effective than the baseline. But uh, in the second year, the situation was completely, the picture was completely different. Much more our participants could actually beat a baseline approach. And there are reasons for that. So what we, uh, what we observed is that deploying the classical retrieval model, models is still works good. And the classical, we talk now about are uh, about the idea of sparse retrieval like BM25 or directly language models. But, uh, but since we already created a corpus with relevance judgments, so our participants in the second year could use these relevant judgments to fine tune the parameters of the model just to check, well, okay, I am, I'm gonna set this parameter to BM25 to this value or to other value, and then com compare the results, calculate the NDCG, compare the results, and then uh, I select the most effective parameters. But we also saw that um, machine learning, different machine learning approaches uh, Receive much more attention in the sec uh, second year uh, that were used, for example, for query expansion techniques, or the uh, our participants train classifiers uh, that uh, that evaluated the argument quality in the retrieve results, and then they uh, re-ranked their results uh, based on the uh, argument quality. So here, the similar picture we observed for the second task in, in our first edition, only one approach uh, from Bilbo Baggins was better as our BM25 baseline posts and bots. And in the second year, we saw that already many more submissions, uh, many more uh, our participants could do better uh, than, uh, than our proposed baselines. So, and here is a short summary of the techniques that our participants used for the uh, second task. So we see that representation of the documents as a back of words was popular in the first year. It still was used in the second year, but we see that in the second year, our participants started using uh, different transformer models like BERT or sentence BERT to represent documents uh, and queries. Um, they also do a lot of query processing like removing stop words, limitizing the query terms, and also expanding or reformulating queries using synonyms and antonyms. Um, important features that they also used for re-ranking is for example, um, calculating some comparativeness score for the second task, like uh, searching for occurrences of the compared objects on the documents and counting them. And then they used these different features to train machine learning classifiers. For example, gradient boosting classifiers or using some bird-based classifier to uh, re-rank documents based on those features. Um, calculating the argument support was also used as a, uh, as a feature for re-ranking. Uh, and, and it was like uh, searching for premises and claims in the retrieved documents. And for that, uh, some of the participants used uh, the system called Tugger, um, uh, which returns given, given, given some text. It, it, 
it taxed and finds uh, the premises and claims, and then they just calculated how many premises and claims in the, each document divided by the uh, length of the document, so the number of terms, and this would constitute the argument support. So basically assessing how argumentative this document is. It is and then and then this was used as one of the feature to train a classifier, uh, for example, to then rerun documents such that more argumentative documents um, would be ranked higher. So here's a summary of what what worked good for our participants. So the most effective approaches, they used query expansion. For example, they used WordNet to reformulate queries by finding synonyms or sometimes even antonyms or generation models like GPT-2 were used to generate new queries. Let's say, well, I want a query which um, has a similar meaning, but uses other words, uses synonyms. So document representation using transformers like BERT uh, showed to be also uh, one of the effective approaches. Uh, Re-ranking that we just talked about of the document based on different features like argument quality, argument support prediction or comparativeness features or also finding premises and claims in the documents and working around that. And of course, uh, when, um, uh, um, uh, when our participants used uh, the relevance judgments that we provided from previous years to fine tune or to optimize the parameters of the system, uh, of, of the retrieval system, this also had a positive effect on the final ranking and final ranking uh, effectiveness. Uh, yeah. And yes, well, uh, uh, there are many new neural approaches that are emerging in information retrieval and being applied in, in information retrieval, but still those classical like BM25, um, if you do uh, a clever parameter optimization for, for these models. If you then apply some re-ranking strategies based on different features, they still work good. So on this slide, I also put a, a collection of different materials where you can read the paper uh, uh, of our previous editions of to share where we provide more details and overview of the submitted approaches. Uh, you can also find uh, the presentations like slides. Uh, we do have a collection of video presentations from our Tusha workshop. So you can also watch this video presentation uh, presentations on the YouTube. Uh, our website to share is an important source and I will uh, just at the end of the talk, uh, I will go to the website and we will have a look what you can find there, all the materials, all the data and the task descriptions. Um, so my last slide, two last slides will be about information retrieval software toolkit kits that you can use to build your retrieval approaches to start building your search engine. So uh, here's the number of them. And I provided also click, clickable links. Once you click on it, you will go to a GitHub and then you will uh, of, of this particular framework. And then you will find example usage like code snippets, how to use and what retrieval systems are implemented there. Uh, you, you, can, you can try and select anything that you like, but probably uh, the most uh, usable one. So what I see people use quite often and find good and convenient, I could say this would be Ansirini. 
This is a Java-based PySerini. This is a Python Europa for, uh, for Anserini. And PyTerrier is also a very popular framework to start building uh, retrieval approaches. IR dataset provides a huge collection of the information retrieval data sets where you also can find relevance judgments for documents uh, for, from different collections. This is when you want to use these relevant judgments for parameter optimization or training your retrieval approaches or trying to evaluate. And then there is also a track tools, a nice Python library that allows easily evaluate using different standard metrics for um, evaluation of the results. Uh, and on this slide, I also collected a number of argument processing toolkits, data sets, and materials. So I already mentioned the Targa. This is the tool that can be accessed using the API. And you send the text to Targa, and then you get back uh, the same text that a JSON file uh, where it is tagged by premises and claims. And then you can work with that. For example, you, you want to assess how argumentative uh, this, uh, this particular document, then you can calculate how many premises and claims in this document. This is the stance classification API. So basically sending a text uh, and topic, uh, you, would, you would get back a class as a, this is a pro argument or this is a con argument. And a very nice collection of many different argument related classifiers are avail available as APIs at the project debater. So there you can find argument quality classifier. You just send some text and then you get a score uh, from zero to one. How good this argument is, you can get also the stance of an argument, pro and con, and so on. Uh, if you train your own classifier, here is, for example, for argument quality, here I also provide a collection of different data sets that can be used to train the classifier for argument quality. Uh, a data set to train a classifier for stance detection, and at the bottom of the slide, there is a collection of lecture slides and tutorial in particular for argument search, computational argumentation, and also for argument retrieval. So this was my slide, last slide, but it's not the end of the presentation. I will now need to change my screen and to go with you uh, to the Touche website. So I hope you can see it. Uh, so this is the main page of, of our shared tasks. And then you find here the button register now. So if you participate, we will ask you to register. And then uh, the first, this will be the two-step registration process. The first, you will register via the CLEA website. But the thing is that there you can put only uh, one contact name. That's why once you register there, we will receive the notification and we'll send you a Google Forms because you're gonna be working with, on, uh, with, uh, in teams like three, four, maybe five people. And then you can provide all your contact details, all your email addresses, because we're gonna send you different notifications like remind, uh, reminders about important deadlines. That's why for that, uh, we will need um, all email addresses of your teams. Uh, we will also ask you and send you a link to select a team name. And uh, we have prepared a list of uh, fictional fencers like, like we saw, we do have 
Asterix, we do have Soros and so on. And then you can decide which team name are, you would like to participate. So here is the collection of the important dates, dates and we would be happy to receive your submissions so your ranked results by May 2. But if you feel we want to be flexible, if you feel that you need a little bit more time or you have some questions, you, maybe you don't understand something, then we provide here also our email address to share it with us there. And please do not hesitate just to send us email with your questions or if you need some, if you need some more time to finalize your approaches, um, you can ask us uh, for, uh, for, for, for a deadline uh, extension. So we will be flexible with that. So, and then if you go, so click here or click here at the top at task one, then we end up uh, on the, this particular task page where there is the task formulated here. Here is the data, the corpus of the sentences that you need to retrieve from. Here will be the collection of topics, the link to submission system, TIRA, some optional data, and in optional data, we provide the relevance judgments from the last year of Touche and also the quality judgments, so basically uh, given our given a document, whether argumentation is a good quality or not. Uh, again, more details on the evaluation. What does it mean? Strong argument, argumentatives, uh, argumentativeness in this sense. So uh, we also allow each participating team to submit up to five different runs. For example, you're building a system and you want a retrieval system and you want to try just different, different models, retrieval models. So you can try one model, you can pick up another model, or you maybe want to try uh, different parameters of these models. So basically then you could submit uh, different five different uh, results, uh, rank results of your system. Uh, the, submission, uh, the submission of the results, we will ask you to use Tira. And uh, this is a software that allows, so you get a virtual machine there, you can power it on. Uh, some instructions, some preliminary instructions can be found here. But once you have registered, we will send you we will create for you an account for Tira and we'll send you information about that. And we will, of course, provide you with all the support. So if something doesn't work or if you need more resources, like you know, more, um, more memory, uh, then you can al always send us an email and we are very happy to support you and to help you get everything running and done. Uh, optionally, of course, if something doesn't work at all or you feel like you don't have time to deploy this on Tira, of course, we will be able to submit your uh, so your results, your runs per email. Uh, here is an example of how, how the run file will look like for task one. So at the first position, there is the topic number. So each of our, of our 50 topics will have a particular number. Then in the second column, you put the stance. If you decide to classify the stance, and this is optional, then you put our the ID of each sentence in the pair. Then you put the rank one, two, three. It should be ascending. And then, then you put the uh, retrieval score that your system returns in the descending order. And here, here you put how would you shortly, briefly call your particular method. 
The similar, the similar structure uh, has the web page for the second task. You have a document collection can be downloaded from here. Here is this stance data set that I was also talking about that can be used to train your stance detection classifier. Example of the topic of, of, the, uh, of the search topics. Uh, the search topics can be downloaded from here. As additional resources, we also provide a subset of MS Marco dataset where we classified all the questions as comparative or not. And we just extracted the comparative questions. And this data set contains comparative question and a set of passages that have, uh, but they have just two labels, zero and one, like relevant or not relevant, but it still can be used to train uh, to train your retrieval approaches. Uh, we also provide a collection of the topics and the relevance and our quality judgments from uh, last year. Uh, the, only, uh, the only difference is that last year we uh, organized the retrieval of web documents. So they are usually quite long web documents. And this year we changed to the retrieval of text passages. It's just short paragraphs from those documents. Uh, here we again described the evaluation process. Uh, the submission format is similar to the first task. We have first column task or uh, topic number. Then you put the stance if you decide uh, to classify the stance. If not, uh, then uh, here should be, uh, yes. So if you do not classify the stance, you put here just Q0 and that's all. Um, the document ID, again, rank and retrieval score, female system and the group method. Uh, here you can also submit up to five different runs. Again, using either using Tira or per email. Okay, I think that's all from my side. Okay, thank you very much, Alexander. So. Um... Any questions from the students? This is a very good moment to address. Yes, the Professor, I have a question. Oh, sorry. Yes, <laughs> My, I'm, I'm a video. Yeah. yes please. Um, Hi. I have a question about. Um, uh, hello. Uh, I have a question about the participants. You were talking about the. Uh, that they used BERT and other systems uh, for in their project. Um, which programming language was their main language in the project? Did they use Java or Python? It's usually Python, yes. Uh, so usually they use Python for this. They usually, and... they usually use Python. Uh, well, it, it is also possible to use Java. And for example, Ansirini will allow you will allow you to experiment uh, with different retrieval uh, systems using Java, yeah. Okay, thanks. And so in case we use Python, and which system do we use for information retrieval in Python? So I it was written, but I forgot. Yeah, yeah, so for for Python, quite often I used uh, Pyteria Pi and PySerini. Okay, thanks so much. This was Thank you for the question. Other questions, guys? Any doubts, concerns about the setup, what you have to do? Because that, that's to let you, let you know, Alexander. Uh, we uh, are now completing the, the setup of, uh, of the groups. 
So by this Friday, all the groups will uh, be set up in, in, in the course, and then they'll come and uh, register on, uh, on the Touche website. So at that point, uh, they will get in touch with you and uh, access the data and uh, whatever. So far, we have six groups, but more should be coming by this, uh, this Friday. Five of them are uh, registered to task one, and uh, one is uh, registered for task two. Uh, maybe they, they are a bit scared about task two for the data set being bigger, and uh, mm -hmm. it's some concern about uh, uh, the processing time and uh, this kind of uh, things. But uh, guys, this is the really right moment. I mean, uh, the slides that uh, Alexander has shown uh, are already on the website, uh, on the Moodle uh, page of the course, so you can access them with all the, the links, uh, the collections, uh, tools, uh, etc. And this is a, a great uh, support. And uh, um, also Alexander gave, uh, uh, gave us uh, a lot of indications about what can work and what cannot work. Uh, even simple things uh, like tuning well the, the parameters, uh, the kind of query expansion, etc. So you are really a wide range of things uh, you can experiment. I have a question. Okay. Um, you mentioned that we have access to um, last year's rankings. Uh, do you think it would be a good idea to use this um, to tune the hyperparameters of our models? Or do you think it's best to ignore this and try and come up with a good idea? This is, this is all, always a good idea to use um, the relevance judgments available. So you can use those that we already shared uh, on the website. And you can, you can also find many other because there are many other uh, information retrieval collections with uh, relevance judgments. And for that, uh, for, for, for that, I also linked the IR datasets uh, uh, resource where you can find, like you can find there dozens different datasets with our relevance judgments. Uh, what could probably not work, and it's usually usually an issue in information retrieval or in text classification, is the domain change. For example, if you fine tune your models on the news collections, but then you apply this model on the document, like usual, like web document, just generic web document, uh, this could potentially fail. So that uh, it's always the best idea to use for parameter optimization or for training um, to use the data that comes from the same or uh, similar uh, data domain. So that's why that's why our uh, what we provide, what we provide on on the Touche website, the relevance judgments are from our last pre previous years, last year. Uh, this would at least guarantee that you would stay in the same domain. Like for the first times, these uh, these are argumentative debates, and for the same uh, for the second task, uh, these are web documents. Uh, but it still could be a little bit problematic in the sense that if, for example, for, for the first task, uh, we have relevance judgments for uh, long text debates. It's, they are usually like three, four paragraphs, but the task will be on the sentences. But still, to get, to get some like but still i believe using even 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 if we would 
like try to train or optimize parameters on the longer document documents and then apply on the shorter documents, uh, then it still should work, I believe. Like another solution could be to transfer, for example, you take a longer document and you have a relevance judgments. For example, it is a very relevant document to this query. What I would do, I would use some paraphrasing model or summarization model, which are, for, for example, if you go to hugging face, uh, there are, and you take one of the most, like one of the most popular recent models is BART model, which do summarization. And using hugging face, the implementation should be quite easy. They have many, many examples there how to implement, implement this summarization uh, models. So basically it's like just several lines of code in Python. And then you could say, well, okay, I have as an input, a long document, please produce me just a paragraph of 10 sentences. And then you would get something similar to what we have now in our task. You will have then relevance judgments for short paragraphs that you can use to train or optimize your retrieval system. Yeah. My, my fear would be that if um, I need adjusted my model so that it gets similar rankings to last year's models, then it wouldn't be an improvement. It would just be um, doing the same thing as last year. Um, so I would, I would like to use the last year's models so that I don't have some direction. Um, but I guess it'd be best to wait for the relevant judgments from the humans before I um, completely finish the tuning of how to find from the model. But I wasn't really asking a question, it was more just expressing a fear. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah, in general, uh, you, you almost always need to, to leverage all the previous information you have for doing uh, uh, training. So uh, I understand that you are worried if I use the last year data, I will get to last year performance, but it's not exactly uh, like that because you can train your models to try to outperform last year uh, uh, runs. Maybe that could be seen as overfitting over last year, but if you go better uh, than last year runs, you hope that this gain you achieved on the previous data set will somehow stay also in the, in the new data set. But there is no, uh, uh, I mean, in general, there is no way uh, to, to try to improve uh, without uh, relying on, uh, on previous uh, knowledge. So don't be worried about that. It's the way to go typically. Right. Sure. Other questions? Any doubts? Are the tasks clear? What you are expected to do? How to participate? And really, guys, to share people is super supportive. So last year they also interacted a lot with all the students, helping them in understand uh, how to, to do the job, how to do the submission, and. Okay, we are not going to cover uh, the tier apart in uh, in the in the course, but that is uh, a nice uh, engineering uh, add-on because you, you, you learn how to run a container, uh, how to uh, deploy something which is reproducible, which is uh, important. And working in, in, in a team where I assume you have different uh, systems like uh, Linux, uh, Windows, uh, Mac OS, etc., should be also a way to be portable among uh, yourself. Alexander may uh, 
have given you an hope. He was really talking about flexibility in uh, the schedule, but your professor, unfortunately, is not flexible. <laughs> on the schedule. We have uh, very tight uh, deadlines for, uh, for the homework, because for example, they have to deliver two homeworks. One is aligned with uh, the submission deadline on uh, 2 of May. I don't remember if for us it's one day earlier or something, but that's the first uh, homework. And uh, the second homework is aligned with uh, delivering uh, the report for, uh, for, the, uh, for the working notes. And everything is going to, to end uh, mostly by, by the end uh, of the course, because the, the idea is that they are fully committed during the semester. They work together during the semester when all of them are here and uh, not uh, somewhere else. And then uh, that's it. So we will be super good with the with, uh, with deadlines. Any other questions? Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, so I know we are going to uh, write a paper on that. Uh, do you have any suggestion to do it here? And maybe any suggestion? To... Our, yes. So uh, from our side, I don't know what are the requirements from your professor, because they could maybe not align, be aligned at some um, um, faucet, but our so we already on the website, we already provided a template for the paper that we believe will be also used this year as like the same template as was used for last year. Our, in my slides, you can also find the links to, the, our, to our participants' papers. So basically you can just have a look what people were and use them as an example, what people were writing about uh, in, our, in their papers, in their working notes. Our, but what we also provide, once you submitted a paper, we have some time to review your paper. So I will just go again and just to check this, to, to check this schedule. Our, so we have now the paper submission is May 27. We will read your paper, review it, our, and by June 13, we will our, send you a feedback to your paper with, our, uh, with the hints where to improve, where, for example, reviewers didn't understand your approach. Maybe you just didn't provide enough details to reproduce your approach. So we give you feedback and then you will have time uh, like two weeks to, re to revise your paper and to resubmit it again. So if this is what you ask, like about how to write these uh, working notebooks, uh, it's always a good idea to look into what was written before by our participants to get an overview. And the second thing we are as, as organizers will, will review your working notes and also give you feedback and uh, give you some tips uh, where and how to improve uh, your working notes. Okay, thank you. Alexander, to make a, uh, you understand how it works here. Yeah. So the, the first homework is not just uh, the, um, the submission uh, of the runs, but basically they have uh, to write a report, uh, which is uh, where the template uh, for uh, the working notes are available. And uh, it is a kind of uh, first part uh, of uh, the working note paper. So it is uh, the introduction, uh, explanation uh, of uh, their methods, uh, the pipeline. So, so the, the description of uh, what, uh, what they, they have done. 
uh, for, for the second goal work when also the uh, new ground route uh, uh, comes out, uh, basically they, they will have to, to run the statistical analysis of their uh, results uh, and uh, write that part uh, of, uh, uh, of the paper plus the, the related work section. I mean, the related work section could be done earlier, but uh, it's just to balance a little bit the, the load between the, the, two, uh, the two works. So um, we we already adopted also for the, 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 the plates available on the touche site, etc. Uh, oh, each group will have a, a, a Git repository, a public Git repository where everything is uh, pushed so that that will be also part of the report you will receive. Maybe uh, the, the, the question uh, of Alessio could be uh, also a little bit about what kind of insights uh, uh, you expect uh, in, uh, in the paper. Uh, I mean, we, we went to the, the outline of, uh, of the paper, but something which is possibly uh, not easy to get for, for a student for the first time, for a student is, uh, okay, I, I look at the performances and I try to give insights about uh, uh, my system. And already the talk uh, you, you gave uh, this morning uh, should help uh, students to understand why we say that is a cooperative effort where we just want at the end of the day discuss together what worked, what didn't work, and how we did the things in order to, to progress the research. But maybe the question is, from uh, your point of view as organizer, what do you find helpful uh, in a paper written in a report for you to discuss, uh, uh, to write the working notes uh, overview, or then to do the summary presentation of uh, the main approaches that you get. Yes. Yeah. Our... You are frozen. Not really working. Okay. Guys, okay, he disconnected, uh, so maybe we join. We join. Tommy, you see everything okay, right, guys? Yes. Okay. So let's wait a little bit. Any other questions while we are waiting? Think that the um, the big difference in the models that get developed for each task. Sorry. Do you think there will be a big difference in the models that get developed for each task, or do you think they'll be relatively similar? Uh, the, the basic models, uh, as uh, as you've seen, uh, are uh, mostly similar. Uh, the, the the difference is probably more in the post processing uh, you are doing. 
the second task is possibly needing some more sophisticated uh, NLP uh, analytics and uh, I'm Hi, I'm back. Uh, something terrible ha happened. My whole system just shut down for some reason. Don't know what what was that, but yeah. What do we have, they have to write in the paper in the report? But yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. There are two. I would I would say what uh, what would help us very much to then write about the task is uh, are the details of your approach that you know if you say well okay we take this then it would be really good if you also write why you take and use somebody particular method or system. So you basically could reference, say, well, okay, in previous to share, or you find some other examples where these, like, for example, query expansion, you will, or you, you will find some related works on that, why it works. And then you can say, well, we take this idea because it showed to you, uh, it showed to be, are promising or improving some retrieval results, and then we apply this. Uh, and another important uh, point is when you do an error analysis and you try to reflect and to see why something worked or something didn't work, like your idea behind this, your feeling behind this, or maybe some numbers that you could calculate. Uh, because this is your approach, you know your approach better than our, us. And I believe that you can share with us or share with the readers of your paper, your intuition behind your approach, why you did this and why something worked and something didn't work. Yes, guys, this, this last point is uh, extremely important. We, we touched uh, upon it, uh, we called uh, failure analysis, uh, which is uh, the same thing, uh, and uh, it's not uh, debugging the system. Your system works, uh, but uh, the model or the, the idea of uh, what uh, uh, should have happened uh, you had before when you developed the system has uh, some misalignment with uh, how the data, how the task or how the humans doing uh, the queries uh, uh, behave. So is this the kind of mismatch you are trying uh, to, to explain? And uh, if you consider that you are submitting runs, so to them is a kind of black box. They, even if you describe the system, they don't have, okay, there is a tier, but if they are not opening up the system, etc. So they are looking from outside while you have your systems and you can do checks, which is not submitting other runs, but uh, you, maybe you just try manually a variation of a query or a step and you discover, ah, okay, in the pipeline uh, I had submitted, it was working like this, while the variation that I did uh, works better and it is because of the terms I put in the query or because how a term uh, got to stand or uh, whatever reason. So when we say inside or insights or failure analysis, we mean uh, something like this. And sometimes that they are really things that you have to check out and look. You remember, we also look at the, uh, we will look at the indexes of, you seem to understand what was actually indexed, how the, the terms look like. This is something which is internal to your system and that's the kind of information they cannot have access uh, to. So, for example, a few years ago, in the track, Rubasta track, there was a, a, a topic about teenage pregnancy, and that was really, really hard to, to, for the performances for all the systems. Then they tried variants of the topic, of the, the query, until a manual variant, which was not really uh, correct, 
that was a teen pregnancy that was super well performing. And then looking at the indexes, etc., they understood that it was a problem of interaction between the topic, the kind of tokens that they have in the corpus, and so on and so forth. Okay, so these kind of insights are, are okay, and they probably happen naturally while you are developing the system and while you are using last year training data, because something like this will pop up on the data they already provide you for training, and you will get an understanding. Besides, it is also uh, we decided not to do in this way because we have seen on last year, on previous year data, that things didn't work because our pipeline misinterprets or misbehaves in this specific context. So it's really trying to describe your experience and what you have learned along the way. Would it be possible for us to have access to um, a report that was really well, well written from, from a Touche team another year or something for us to have a reference? Okay, so th this is uh, basically asking uh, a paper you would candidate for the best of labs uh, in next edition among all the reports, one that uh, looks uh, better for two. two mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our... Yes, we did candidate one work. Our... I just need to probably look it up again. So uh, if, it's, if it's fine, we'll do the following. So uh, after, after the meeting, I will just look it up, what was exactly the work, but maybe I will find like two or three examples that I think are very good and excellent examples. And I will just send to Nicola Ferro per email this works and you can then share with the students these examples. Yeah. Sure. Thank you very much. Okay, any other questions for Alexander? Um, so for the task one, uh, the data set that is provided in the website uh, can be seen as divided into ID, conclusion, premises, and also context. So the context is really long uh, in general. And do we have to use it or is it useful for only for judges to see if the sentences, uh, the premises or the conclusion we decided that I would or not? Mm. So the question are, is whether it is allowed to use like from the topics to use the narrative, right? Um, no, uh, in the uh, data set for task yes. one, there is a field called context for every uh, document, I would say. And uh, uh, I'm not sure how the context can be useful for us if we only have to provide conclusions or premises that are written in another field. So the, the question is not whether the narrative can be used for searching, but uh, it's more about the structure of uh, the documents. What? Uh, yeah. Are, so. Uh, how do you do yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I got, I got it. Whether, whether all information that is in the corpus or, uh, can be used, uh, or they are allowed to use. Yeah, of course. Okay. He was mentioning the fact that there is a context uh, tag which provides some information, then uh, that is not what you have to, uh, to retrieve as an argument, etc. So, first, is it allowed to use the content of that? It is, well, it is allowed to use everything that is in the corpus, retrieval corpus, and if context. If you could use the context to uh, to improve the uh, your system or any inf information that you will find in the uh, uh, in the corpus, then of course you should use it. Thank you. Other questions? 
Uh, I have one. What about expanding with uh, external uh, resources uh, like uh, using Wikipedia or uh, that kind of stuff? Expanding what? Maybe you can expand your query. Yes, uh, yes. Yes, so yeah, uh, like for query expansions, what, what we saw, and this is also an external resource, a resource, linguistic resource, WordNet, for example, you can find, so you can search for, uh, and this is what also showed, show, showed to be your successful approach to use synonyms of the particular, of, an, of important query terms. So basically we formulate the titles as questions and you should consider them that not all terms in the questions are important. Like for example, question, uh, question word, I think it shouldn't be used at all when you're querying the documents, uh, except for the case when the documents, for example, has a title or something which just repeats uh, these are uh, the same questions or some auxiliary verbs as is. Yeah. But for other important terms like um, comparison objects, for example, or comparison aspects for the second time to the task, uh, well, it is a good idea to use and to expand queries with different synonyms. And then you can use for that, you can use WordNet, you can go further and use our different, our different embeddings like word to vec you can use to generate synonyms. Then you can go even further and use transformer models that generate, just generate synonyms for you. Or uh, I don't know how to use Wikipedia, for example, for our, uh, uh, or if it's can be useful somehow if we say for searching like synonyms, uh, et, et, et cetera, or like. I was just thinking very broadly. If you have entities in your, in your argument, you could uh, look them up in, in Wikipedia and try to expand with some uh, from yes, yes. So yeah, I'm then then I'm thinking now the next step even to go further. Uh, there is uh, there is uh, uh, there is a model. It's called Deep Ceter. It's also used for retrieval for document retrieval. So an idea behind this model is to calculate the to estimate the query term importance, but context aware importance. It's not just like, you know, matching the term exact matching, but DIPCT is a bird-based model. That's why it estimates or in the document, in the collection, it estimates the importance of each term or for this particular query. I mean, like you can expand this idea with Wikipedia in the following way. You could, mm, let's say you have an entity in the query, an important entity in the query and like climate, climate change. And then for this topic, you will definitely find a Wikipedia article about the climate change, right? And then you can try to use information in this article to, to, to again, to identify what are important terms are uh, what is it what is it talking about and this would be somehow uh what what we saw already in the topic description where we have like when 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 we describe a such scenario we also put like more verbose description uh, where you can also find important or uh, important terms for query expansion. In a similar way, 
any other external resources like Wikipedia articles could also be used. You can use automatic approaches like calculating, for example, the, uh, estimating the query importance, again, using deep CTR or some other models available. Uh, you can do this also manually. You can just look at the description or look into the Wikipedia article and as a human decide, well, what are the terms could be important to find maybe synonyms, maybe even antonyms, because we saw our, our, some participants also used antonyms, which is counterintuitive for me, was for me, but still it was an interesting idea to use antonyms for the query terms. Uh, and then you can just look into the article and say, well, okay, I believe when people searching for climate change are, are this concept or this entity is important or and this should be important, could be important than this one. And just pick them manually and add to a query and do the search once again and to see whether it improves results or not. Yeah, just yesterday we talked about the fact that the topic is a surrogate of the information need, but then you can derive queries either automatically or manually. So that's are uh, yes on like on the there is uh, the, the 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 current the ground current approaches is document to query and for example t4 t5 model is implemented document to query when you say when you give to the model the whole document and I ask the model to formulate the query for which this document would be relevant we are actually already did this for the second task and on the web page for the second task and the additional resources, you could find already this uh, document to query queries formulated automatically with T fund transformer models. Yeah. Yeah. And guys, all, all these are on the spot the discussion because this is a really uh, a kind of a way like with brainstorming is to try to make you understand that. The point is not uh, engineering uh, the pipeline uh, encoding. It's really trying uh, to come up with uh, some uh, ideas uh, where you you are curious uh, and you try. Oh, what if uh, I use Wikipedia for doing that? And is a good quality resource? Can that help me? And you discover because again. The, the, the purpose of, of, of the game, even if we measure performance, is not to uh, be the top performer. No. It is to understand what works yes. and what doesn't work. So negative results, uh, whatever, if uh, uh, you saw, Alexander was saying, to me, I'm, I'm, uh, antonyms were not intuitive, but they made an argument and explained why uh, and checked that they can work. So it's really the purpose is really to build the knowledge. Okay. Any other questions? So, Alexander, thank you very much again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you from my side. <laughs> all the time you devoted to us and uh, looking forward to participating. In we too. We're looking forward to you. I wish you a nice day. Bye bye. Yeah. You, you too. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, guys. Stop it.